good afternoon everybody uh, and uh, thank you for joining this facebook live session on colorectal cancer i am dr mangesh kamath i am a senior consultant in medical oncology hemato oncology and bone marrow transplant and uh, we have our clinic helios cancer and hematology clinics in bangalore where uh, we not only play a role in treating all the cancers but also we play a very significant uh, role in trying to spread awareness about cancers and help prevent many cancers one of them is colorectal cancer so uh, i am going to take this session in a uh, span of 15 to 20 minutes i'll keep it short but i would also like to uh, portray all the best and the most relevant points regarding colorectal cancer few take home messages so that you can uh, remember uh, this talk uh, through the conclusions that i will be providing and most uh, uh, importantly i would like to make uh, this uh, non technical but highly informative so colorectal cancer it is one term but basically the term colorectal cancer encompasses a huge organ of which we call as our large bowel a large intestine uh, colon and rectal cancers are cancers that involve the lowest part of the digestive system now what is the difference between colon and rectum colon is the one through which the food transits into and rectum is the one into which the final feces is basically stored before being evacuated through the anus so basically there are certain uh, uh, processes that take place from the time uh, the uh, the food uh, that we eat passes uh, enters the uh, large intestine uh, starting from the cecum and then it ascends uh, through the ascending colon then goes across the transverse colon then descends in the colon and by which time most of the uh the processes that are uh, important uh, uh, in the large intestine uh, uh, uh take place finally the food drops down and it's collected into this uh, uh, this collecting uh, uh, organ or the collecting sub organ called as the rectum now the rectum uh, and the colon cancers are clubbed together because they are continuous so there is not any anatomical uh, uh, you know uh, great difference between both of them because they are continuous there are certain differences in the way both of them uh, function but uh, overall uh, they are continuous organs that's why they are clubbed as colorectum the cancers of the colon and rectum are clubbed as the colorectal cancers the treatment of them are similar but also dissimilar in many aspects so we cannot apply the same treatment protocol for colon cancer to the rectal cancer uh, there are certain anatomical differences between the, the colon and the rectum which uh, uh, make the treatment protocols different but the common parts are the fact that the tumors in both the colon and the rectum they start as a polyp uh big polyps are nothing but like balloon like projections into the uh, cavity of the large bowel uh, which are basically like masses and these masses uh, then start growing uh, not only into the uh, empty cavity of the large bowel but also uh, spread across the wall of the large bowel finally they can even go beyond the bowel of the uh, Uh, large intestine into the neighboring structures so it is a very important uh, slide because this will probably uh, help you understand uh, uh, the normal functioning of the large bowel and now then we can talk about the colorectal cancer yeah so uh, it is one of the commonest cancers colorectal cancer is one of the commonest cancers in fact uh, it's very high amongst the northeast population and the southern regions of india and uh, uh, males uh, usually have a higher risk of developing colorectal cancers than females and the uh, if you see the all the commonest cancers in india you would find that colorectal cancer is amongst the top 5 cancers in our country uh, and uh, it uh, even though it's 
5% in this entire pie chart, 5% for a population like ours is a huge number. So uh, the bulk of colorectal cancers in our India is very high. The burden is very high. Many patients tend to have uh, uh, been diagnosed at the advanced stage, especially those patients who uh, belong to the remotest uh, regions of our country. And uh, if it is diagnosed, luckily at the earliest stages, colorectal cancers are one of the most curable cancers as well. So this uh, uh, slide probably uh, uh, drives home the point that at least 60% of the death uh, due to colorectal cancers can be prevented if some easily uh, performable early screening procedures are done. It is very, very unfortunate uh, from the oncologist's point of view when I see patients who could have been diagnosed and treated at the earliest stage come to us with advanced stage. And that makes uh, us feel bad because this patient, if, uh, 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 well, if the cancer was detected at the earliest stage, it would have been possible for us to cure this patient and make sure that the patient lives a normal life. There are not many cancers which are as curable uh, as colorectal cancers. The ones which are uh, curable are usually also the ones which are uh, not the most aggressive in many uh, uh, situations. And uh, hence it is much more detectable at the earlier stages uh, compared to those cancers which are very rapidly uh, spreading cancers wherein the window of detection is probably uh, very narrow. So uh, while we also know that westernization, our food habits, sedentary lifestyle, and many other factors are responsible for colorectal uh, cancer uh, risk being increased in our country. Uh, there is also uh, the fact that colorectal cancer can also occur in, uh, 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 in familial uh, um, heritage, that is, uh, if there is a father or a mother who has got uh, familial colorectal cancer, that means certain mutations which predispose that individual to a colorectal cancers, it is possible that those genes can be propagated through their children and then could again go through generations. And those children and their uh, progenies can have uh, more than two or three times the risk of developing colorectal cancer as opposed to another individual uh, who does not uh, have any family history. So there is an increased risk by two to three times uh, for those patients, uh, uh, for those uh, individuals whose family members have uh, familial colorectal cancer. Yeah, so uh, what are the risk factors for cancers in general? And what are the risk factors for colorectal cancers? So uh, I, any cancer, uh, we divide the risk factors into factors which we can change and factors which we cannot change. Let us talk first about factors which we cannot change. One is age. Uh, just aging uh, is considered to be a risk factor for colon uh, cancers. Now it is, uh, uh, it is understandable because uh, over years, uh, your colon and your rectum is exposed to so many of the harmful chemicals uh, uh, that are carried to the food material, and uh, especially in the rectum, uh, where the food can be uh, or the, where the stools can be stored for a longer period of time, if these harmful chemicals are there, they can affect the uh, colorectum and hence uh, increase the chances of mutations occurring and hence cancer occurring. If you have a family history, well, I just spoke about it in the previous slide, there is a higher risk of developing uh, colorectal cancer. Uh, there is also uh, a higher risk of an individual developing colorectal cancer if uh, there is um, uh, you know, a higher personal uh, uh, history of uh, having uh, uh, a lot of polyps. I, like I told you a little while back, polyps are uh, basically uh, those uh, balloon-like projections uh, from the uh, wall of the large intestine. So if in the past you've been uh, detected to have a lot of polyps in the large uh, intestine, it is possible that one or many of those polyps can actually uh, uh, you know, develop into cancers and then start spreading around. Uh, inflammatory intestinal conditions. Some people have inflammatory bowel diseases, Crohn's disease, 
ulcerative prochoritis these are basically diseases where the lining or the mucosa of the large intestine is constantly in a state of some sort of inflammation some sort of activity uh, it, it's it's like an allergy that occurs on our skin there is an allergy that's going inside your large intestine due to which uh, these allergies over a period of time can actually damage the normal uh, lining of the mucosa uh, in the large intestine and these uh, damaged cells can sometimes escape your immunity and uh, give rise to cancerous tumor cells and these tumor cells can then become uh, large tumors of the uh, large intestine. So it is important for us to remember that colorectal uh, cancer, certain risk factors are very difficult for us to get it on. But are there risk factors we can change? Of course, there are many and thankfully colorectal cancer has got a lot of risk factors that can be changed due to which I consider colorectal cancers to be probably amongst the top three preventable uh, cancers of the organs of our body. So physical activity. Now, physical activity has been known from a long period of time to be uh, to, to help evacuate uh, the stools a lot more efficiently. People who, uh, uh, who have regular physical activity tend to empty their bowels a lot better than those who do not have. Those uh, who, uh, who have a sedentary lifestyle uh, tend to have a lot of this irritable bowel syndrome or, or uh, those uh, uh, disorders where they are unable to empty the bowels uh, significantly. When you are unable to uh, empty the bowels uh, significantly, the stools uh, are present in the intestine for a much longer time. And this, uh, uh, these, uh, uh, the stool uh, which is there for a longer time in the large intestine can be irritative to the skin lining or the mucosal lining of the large bowel and that can give rise to damage of the mucosal cells. Uh, there are other reasons also uh, due to which colorectal cancer can occur in sedentary lifestyle. Well, uh, it is known that certain diseases like diabetes, uh, certain uh, diseases like having uh, a very high uh, fat content in the body can increase the inflammatory markers in our body due to which uh, the, the, uh, the cells of the intest large intestine can be harmed and due to which they can become tumorous as well. So lack of physical activity, obesity uh, tend to be uh, uh, probably I would say amongst the top three causes for uh, uh, for developing colorectal cancer. Uh, smoking uh, is also a, a big factor uh, for colorectal cancer. Uh, heavy smokers tend to have higher uh, chances of developing colorectal cancers compared to the non-smokers. Diet. Well, diet is a huge factor in many of the uh, gastrointestinal tract cancers. I'm going to come to that. We have a slide on it later. But diet is a very important risk factor that can be modified uh, by an individual, irrespective of whether the individual carries those, uh, uh, what do you call as uh, irreversible risk factors such as family history. So even though we cannot change our uh, origins, we can change uh, uh, how uh, our body uh, behaves. Uh, uh, to the external stimuli that we face constantly day in and day out. Early signs of symptoms uh, or symptoms of uh, uh, colorectal cancer are actually probably the most evident uh, of, of, of most of the cancers. Like, for example, you could have blood in your stool. So people can uh, probably talk about uh, them having the piles or hemorrhoids, as they call it. But uh, if, you, if you have blood in your stool, there is no reason why you should not consult a surgeon or a physician who would then uh, evaluate you and try and rule out uh, uh, piles or a hemorrhoids from an actual tumor that is uh, originating from the large intestine. So do not neglect these early signs. And uh, more or less, we usually tend to be aware of passing blood in stools. And uh, that is very, very uh, uh, obvious to us. And, and it should not be neglected if it's evident. If there is frequent abdominal pain for no reason, your bowel patterns are changed. Uh, a person who has been uh, passing his bowels or moving his bowels uh, regularly and uh, satisfactorily for many years in his life, suddenly starts developing lots of constipation or lots of changes in the consistency of the stool, such as a uh, few days constipation, few days, lot of diarrhea. 
those patients should definitely be evaluated because there could be a lingering tumor in the large intestine and a scopy should be definitely able to tell us whether there is uh, uh, any tumor sitting there or not. Loss of weight. Now we should understand that large intestine is a very, very important organ in our gastrointestinal tract, which is responsible for the absorption of certain nutrients and also for uh, basically the maintaining the health of the body. So if there are tumors that are growing in the large intestine, not only those tumors will leak protein out of our system, but they can cause bleeding as well. And apart from that, they can create a state in our body where the body is, uh, body's immunity is completely uh, targeting the large intestine. The consequences of this could be low hemoglobin count, loss of weight, loss of appetite, so many other factors, uh, distress all the time during uh, the daily activities. All these symptoms are, can present and this uh, in constellation with the blood in stools, abdominal pain and change in uh, bowel pattern should um, uh, basically alarm the uh, your, your family practitioners that there is something going wrong in the large bowel and evaluation has to be done on an urgent basis. So it is known that blood in stools is, uh, is very, very uh, uh, important uh, 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 symptom uh, given by the patient and uh, whether it is blood in the stool or urine or any part of our body, blood coming out uh, from any uh, aperture in our body should not be taken lightly and evaluation has to be done because while most of the times it is not a very serious uh, problem, uh, there are uh, possibilities that uh, in around 20-30% of the patients, uh, uh, it could be a cancer that's inside. And if it's detected early, as I told you, cure rates are upwards of 85 to 90% in the majority of these patients. Around uh, the fact that, you know, the bleeding could be due to just a polyp or a colon cancer, it is important that the entire symptomatology, that means the type and the pattern of symptoms are also, uh, uh, you know, uh, are given respect to. Uh, no uh, doctor should uh, avoid uh, investigate, uh, investigating for any blood in stool. So it is important that evaluation is done at the earliest because the blood in feces uh, uh, in stools uh, are coming from the rectum are probably very, very easy to identify. Uh, through simple tests. You don't even have to go uh, through high profile tests. So, so simple tests can actually tell you that there's some rectal, colorectal bleeding occurring and this should uh, guide the physician to go for further evaluation. Uh, this is the same thing I was talking about, change in bowel habits, diarrhea, constipation or feeling that the bowel does not empty completely are some of the commonest symptoms given to us by patients. Uh, weight loss with no known explanation. You lose weight, you're eating the same, uh, no extra exercise, but weight loss is happening. And around the same time, you also feel that you're not passing stools well. And at the same time, you feel like, uh, you know, you're losing a lot of blood. So all these can give rise to weight loss. Abdominal cra uh, cramps or pain is what I told you. You could feel bloating, fullness and cramps. And that's basically because of the fact that uh, the growing tumor in the large bowel may not be allowing the food to pass through. There could be some sort of an obstruction to the food going out of the large intestine. In these cases, you may get some discomfort in the abdomen and bloating, fullness and cramps. Uh, anemia, I had a patient around two months ago who was referred to me for management of anemia and uh, patient had iron deficiency anemia and during the evaluation, we found out this patient had a tumor in the rectum and uh, patient would not tell us any history of passing uh, blood in the stools. Probably it was not obvious to the patient, but um, many of the doctors who get patients with anemia should never neglect doing a stool analysis until and unless there are some other obvious reasons because a stool analysis will easily guide us to uh, probably detecting uh, tumors at the earlier stage. Now, uh, yes, the uh, colorectal cancer is preventable, but, but then how is it preventable? I told you uh, one is to make sure that those risk factors are avoided to the maximum, but well, all of us are living, it is uh, difficult to completely avoid and completely keep yourself away from all the risk factors. Uh, but there are certain guidelines that have been released 
uh, wherein patients can avail certain screening methods due to which uh, these screening methods can guide whether an individual has got any rec colorectal tumor or not. So the most popular them are, are a fecal immunochemical test or which is called as a FIT test. It tests for blood, uh, the swab bowel, bowel movement and uh, you know, uh, it, uh, it, uh, 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 the, just a simple stool test will tell us well, if there is blood or there not. Uh, Guac fecal occult blood test is another type. Remember one thing, they may not detect uh, blood in all the circumstances, but if blood is detected, uh, very high uh, specificity of detecting cancers, more than 90 to 95% in those cases. If you want to identify abnormal DNA in the stools, well, that is also available, but it is not recommended to be done uh, every year, uh, unlike the FIT or the GFOP test, because uh, this is a little more expensive uh, and a little more cumbersome, but well, uh, the American uh, Cancer Society guidelines are recommended this test to be done once every three years. So some of the old timers still practice uh, double contrast, very, very much. Nothing wrong with that, but uh, it, it does not have the best uh, uh, accuracy rates in terms of detecting the cancer. So I personally don't uh, recommend double uh, contrast very many uh, The ones that I do recommend are colonoscopy, sigmoidoscopy, or uh, more if required. So the difference between colonoscopy and sigmoidoscopy is uh, the sigmoidoscopy can only see up to the lowest part of the large intestine, which is otherwise called as a sigmoid colon. And, uh, uh, you know, if you want to see the entire large bowel, then colonoscopy can be done. And uh, in, in case you don't have any symptoms, it's recommended to do colonoscopy once every four to five to ten years, depending on whether the polyps are found or not. And as is predictable, the accuracy of these tests are very good. You can easily get a very high accuracy rate. Uh, accuracy is very important when you're doing screening tests because a falsely detected blood or a falsely undetected uh, blood in the stools can really uh, uh, you know, cause a lot of issues because if the same patient comes with uh, an actual uh, advanced cancer in future, there could be a lot of disappointment for that patient because uh, despite having undergone the tests, uh, they are, uh, you know, I have not been able to detect cancer. So it is better to detect tests such as coloscopy or sigma coloscopy, which uh, has a very high accuracy rate. Uh, these are the different uh, types of screening that I discussed about, uh, and this is a sigmoidoscopy as you can see. The, the, the tube with the camera does not go really high, uh, but if it is going really high, then it's called as a colonoscopy. This is colonoscopy. A colonoscopy is a method with which if they put a, a tube which contains a camera and some other uh, functionalities, and the tube goes through the entire large bowel goes up to the cecum and detects for any abnormalities in the mucosa. So if these abnormalities are detected in the mucosa, it is very uh, useful uh, 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 to biopsy. As you see here, the biopsy can be done and uh, these abnormal looking uh, uh, lesions can uh, then be uh, biopsied and the biopsy can help us determine whether it was cancer or not. So there is this new concept coming called a CT colonoscopy. Suppose you are not happy to undergo an actual colonoscopy because of discomfort. That uh, is not much the case nowadays, but even then, if you are concerned about it, a virtual colonoscopy is offered, which uses a low dose computerized uh, tomography method. And uh, it uh, takes 3D images of your colon and rectum and helps us to uh, understand if there is some suspicious linear lesion in our colon or rectum. And uh, this would be very, very convenient for patients. They don't have to undergo the conventional uh, colonoscopy, but it is still not as considered as accurate as probably, um, uh, you know, as I told you in the previous slide here, it is still not considered to be as accurate as, a, uh, as the conventional uh, colonoscope or conventional sigmoidoscope. So once a cancer is detected, we always talk about staging of the cancer. Remember one thing, staging is easy to remember. Stage and uh, one and two are usually uh, uh, those stages where uh, the tumor is in the wall of the large bone. 
So it has not spread beyond the bowel wall. Stage three means it has spread beyond the bowel wall, but has not spread to any other organs other than the large intestine. Stage four means that it has spread to organs which are outside the large intestine. That's all there is to remember about. So stage one and stage two is if it's confined to the large bowel wall. Stage three is if it has uh, extensively destroyed the large bowel wall and also gone outside the large bowel wall or info involved lymph nodes in the large bowel or around the large bowel. And stage four are those where the cancer has spread throughout the body to discuss uh, to distant organs, often initially involving the liver. What are the treatment modalities available once an individual is diagnosed with colorectal cancer? Well, a uh, very simple uh, strategy is uh, first is the treatment depends on the stage. If it's stage one, two, and three, then the treatment is different from uh, uh, from the treatment that we would offer for a stage four patient. So if it's an early stage uh, colorectal cancer, the most important modalities that are useful are surgery, chemotherapy, and in rectal cancers, maybe radiation. But remember one thing, uh, surgery and radiation usually take care of the disease that is visible, that is the tumors that are visible as per the CT scan, PET CT scan, or the MRI scan that may have been done. Chemotherapy plays no, plays no, less, a low, uh, no, no less a role because chemotherapy is responsible for killing all those invisible tumor cells that are floating and running across your blood circulations. If these small invisible cells are not destroyed, there is a very high chance that they can cause stage four disease in the future. Let us consider a patient who undergoes surgery and radiation for rectal cancer. If chemotherapy is not given to this patient, the patient has the highest chance of disease coming back. And this could be frustrating for the patient. But chemotherapy, having received chemotherapy after a standard surgery and radiation, it is very important in avoiding the disease from coming back. It plays a very important in assuring that there is a cure uh, for the cancer patient. The targeted therapy and immunotherapy are the newest strategies that have been determined and have been developed basically for advanced stage colorectal cancers in the, uh, in the, in, uh, in the period uh, before this uh, decade, uh, stage four colorectal cancers were hardly uh, 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 controllable, let alone curable. But today we are talking about not only a, a situation where we can control and reduce a colorectal cancer, but also those situations where in a minority of cases, cure can be achieved. So target therapy, immunotherapy, and anti-angiogenic therapy have been extremely uh, useful uh, across the practice of various medical oncologists where uh, the substantial tumor control and tumor um, reduction can be achieved because of the addition of targeted therapy or immunotherapy to the standard chemotherapy protocols. So as I told you a little while ago, depending on the staging, whatever uh, said and done, stage one, two, and three, surgery will play a role some way or the other. Radiation will play a role in rectal cancers, uh, but when it comes to the non-rectal cancers, there's hardly a role for radiation until unless we are giving it for palliative reasons. But at the same time, remember one thing, adjuvant chemotherapy is very important for us to um, control the tumor in stage two, stage three, stage four uh, cancers. So uh, if the earliest uh, tumor uh, stage is uh, seen, uh, in those, uh, if the tumor is seen in the earlier stages, then polypectomy, that means if you see that, balloon-like projection that you see here, uh, polypectomy is done where the entire tumor is removed uh, to, together and this polypectomy can ensure that the entire uh, tumor is removed uh, without cutting it into small bits. And uh, this can help in curing uh, patients with earliest cancers. If it is slightly advanced, then laparoscopic surgery, robotic surgery are all done. Uh, basically to try and remove different segments of the large intestine. Uh, sometimes uh, it may be extremely uh, uh, difficult uh, surgery to perform. Uh, and uh, apart from the difficulty in performing the surgery, there is going to be a huge problem uh, with regards to uh, a patient bearing with the after effects of surgery, such as a colostomy bag, or in some cases, a lot of uh, uh, you know, abnormal stool consistency for a long period in their lives. 
the, as i told you if there is a cancer in the uh, descending colon or sigmoid colon if the cancer is removed around it could be difficult uh, for the patient uh, 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 you know for the surgeon to connect the two ends because it would not survive and a stoma uh, would be a stoma would be there uh, uh, placed uh, where in the the bowel will go outside uh, the the stools will go outside the stoma uh, and after some time uh, the stoma can be closed uh, uh, the stoma can be closed for some time uh, after uh, after probably connecting the ends in a at a later time or in some situations the stoma will be there for a long period so uh, chemotherapy as i told you uh, is given uh, either before surgery or after surgery excuse me for a second Sorry for that. So uh, earlier years, uh, we used to only use chemotherapy for management of advanced uh, colorectal cancers. But um, uh, the disadvantage was while those chemotherapy agents were very successful in controlling and reducing the size of tumor, uh, the effect of that would not be durable for a large majority of patients. And hence came these different strategies called as target therapy or immunotherapy wherein uh, it would it would be uh, basically um, uh, what do you say uh, help in the durable control of tumor due to these strategies uh, immunotherapy would basically be uh, 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 would be mobilizing the uh, immunity cells of the body which would then attack the uh, tumor cells whereas uh, target therapy would uh, attach the specific targets in the body which would help in the, uh, you know, in the tumor being controlled uh, uh, because of those specific targets that are present on the uh, tumor cells. So after discussing the various strategies to treat uh, colorectal cancer, the various modalities uh, and the way we personalize therapy for uh, colorectal cancer, it is obvious that colorectal cancer is not a very difficult disease uh, to treat. Um, it, there are uh, set protocols. So, uh, and uh, it is very commonly known about the effects or the benefits of the protocols that have been provided uh, uh, due to these treatment strategies. Uh, but still, there is a lot of concern amongst uh, uh, the public that uh, you know these treatments are uh, uh, give a lot of side effects. Uh, it is very difficult. Uh, for uh, uh, for patients to uh, uh, you know it is very difficult for patients uh, to believe that uh, the treatment that we are providing uh, is going to be of uh, great uh, benefit uh, uh, to them uh, we discuss with the patients regularly uh, that these protocols are all uh, that are approved after treating thousands of patients. There is a lot of evidence that these protocols work on a large majority of patients. And there are a lot of patients who have been either cured or controlled for a long period using these therapeutic strategies. And uh, uh, it is important to spread the awareness that treatment of cancer with modern medicine strategies are truly um, uh, going to provide the benefit uh, to patients. Um, and they have ensured that um, uh, lakhs of patients have been cured of colorectal cancer uh, and uh, another uh, a few lakhs of patients have been controlled uh, when they have presented to uh, the oncologist with the uh, uh, advanced colorectal cancers. While all these treatment uh, strategies are very uh, uh, refined and have been studied uh, in various countries across populations, it is also worthwhile knowing that while we are all working towards uh, uh, you know, treating the colorectal cancers that come to us, uh, every oncologist, whether it's a medical oncologist, surgical oncologist, or radiation oncologist, all of us uh, do wish that, we, uh, that cancer can be prevented. 
there is not a single oncologist i know who uh, would not wish that uh, people do not get cancer uh, people uh, don't get cancer because we wish that there are very robust preventive strategies and uh, uh, screening methods uh, are applied so that fewer and fewer patients develop cancers uh, in our country uh, this brings uh, us to the discussion about how to prevent colorectal cancer uh, colorectal cancer uh, as i told you is the cancer of the large bowel so there is a lot of uh, uh, evidence to show that refined food that is food that is made in factories uh, in a refined processing method are not good for our body because refining of food involves two major problems one is the fact that the healthy components of the natural substances are taken out so that the food looks desirable but is not good for the body like for example you use lot of these westernized food uh, products uh, you kind of dehusk the wheat and create maida so all these are meant to give rise to certain uh, consistencies or flavors of the food but this consistency and flavoring of the food is actually not healthy for the body so to summarize prevention of colorectal cancer uh, it is better to avoid refined food that means try to have wholesome food substances have a diet rich in fruits vegetables and whole grains it is astonishing that now we are more uh, satisfied and gratified by uh, burgers and pizzas whereas the ones that we should be gratified with is with fruits vegetables uh, and whole grains there is good fiber in all of them a lot of antioxidants which are responsible for fighting against cancer causing elements there is a lot of nutrition in them which provides for all the nutrition nutritious substances like uh, carbohydrates the the mixed the the complex carbohydrates the proteins the good fats and the vitamins and trace elements all that are going to be components of a wholesome diet which constitutes fruits vegetables and whole grains so basically it's about going back to our roots let us try and consume organic fruits organically farmed vegetables and organically farmed whole grains there is a lot of data to say that even uh, the chemicals that are utilized uh, uh, during uh, synthetic farming are going to cause a lot of uh, you know uh, carcinogens uh, carcinogen formation that means those substances or chemicals that can give rise to uh cancer so uh, we are back to the organic farm uh, uh, age wherein uh, organically produced fruits vegetables and whole grains should be the most important uh, components of our diet so that colorectal cancer can be prevented why colorectal cancer almost other ca- all the other cancers can also be uh, prevented uh, with the diet rich in uh, the normal um healthy fruits vegetables and whole grain uh, constituents so another uh, uh, way of preventing colorectal cancer is to be aware of the fact that if you do have relatives with uh, or your blood relatives with uh, colorectal cancer it is worthwhile for us to uh, know whether we have the genes that they have in our body and if we have the genes that they have they had in our body there are higher chances of developing colorectal cancer and so genetic counseling can be sought and if the gene is actually found to be in you make sure that the preventive strategies such as i like i told you undergo um, undergo the stool test and undergo colonoscopies depending on the uh, risk of developing colorectal cancer so that cancer can be detected at the earlier stages being physically fit is 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 under emphasized uh, today our a lot of working uh, lifestyle uh, uh, basically uh, makes make sure that uh, physical activities 
not very common nowadays so physical activity and uh, maintaining a healthy weight are very important as preventive strategies uh, avoiding smoking too much of alcohol is also very important not only to prevent cancer but even other diseases such as lung diseases and heart diseases a common question that my patient asks me is should everybody be screened uh, in my family because i got uh, colorectal cancer or should the entire population be screened so my answers are usually like this so if there are no uh, you know high risk uh, elements in a in an individual developing cancer uh, usually you should undergo screening once you have crossed the age of 50 um, uh, with the, with no history of uh, colorectal uh, colon polyps or no family history whatever uh these patients can uh, be you know screened you know above the age of 50 maybe with a stool test once a year and maybe a colonoscopy once in 5 years or 3 to 5 years if the uh, you know in in populations where colorectal cancer is very common such as in america they recommend uh, the risk uh, the screening to begin at the age of 45 and uh, if the risk is very uh, high because of these attributes such as a high family history or uh, you know having a, a first degree relative with um, you know cancerous polyp or a personal history of uh, you know multiple polyps or uh, inflammatory bowel disease uh, it is very important for screening to be done more frequently i would recommend a colonoscopy to be done as early as the age of 40 to 45 Uh, so that any polyp whatsoever can be or any abnormality in the inner lining of the large bowel can be detected so to summarize uh, i told you that i would like you to remember these conclusions uh, at the end of our facebook live session colorectal cancer is a very common cancer but also a very treatable curable and controllable cancer the screening is recommended as not only for those uh, people who do not have a higher uh, uh, risk of developing colorectal cancer uh, it should be recommended for every individual uh, usually above the age of 45 to 50 and it would be useful to detect those cancers at the earliest stage so cure can be provided screening with colonoscopy or stool test can prevent uh, cancer by removing uh, and if a colonoscopy detects the polyp even the polyp can be detected in such cases cancer can be detected earlier and it's also more treatable when if it's detected at the earlier stage a healthy diet and uh, good exercise uh, stress free life uh, are all very important in preventing uh, almost most of the cancers more so for uh lowering the risk of developing colorectal cancer it should be discussed by every doctor with uh, his or her patient about how the most optimal screening uh, protocols can be given to a particular individual so that the uh, development of cancer can be reduced by more than uh, 80 to 90% so uh, folks uh, this so folks this uh, uh, facebook live was arranged for me to connect with you and tell you that colorectal cancer is indeed a very preventable and a very curable cancer so it is time to get screened if you believe that you have some of these risk factors make sure that these risk factors are understood by you and make sure that you avail uh, this the easiest and the easily available uh, screening tests So, uh, so please do get screened for colorectal cancer at regular intervals and help uh, you know yourself uh, on the long run thank you very much for your patient hearing if there are any questions feel free to connect with me uh, and uh, i would definitely love to answer your queries and make sure that you uh, you walk out of this uh, facebook live session uh, being a lot more aware about uh, colorectal cancer and make sure that all the conclusions that i passed on to you are followed by you and your family uh, uh, effective